In this video, I'll address a common problem which is distinguishing between a grande theory study and a phenomenological study, because they are so similar. And specifically, I want to give you a question that you can ask yourself and immediately know whether your study feels more like grounded theory or phenomenology. And before we start, remember that if after the video you still have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. I always respond to most of the questions. And after that, if you still require more detail, more tailored and individual assistance, feel free to uh, reach out through my website. I offer lots of services. We can sit down, have a session on Zoom, look at your study, and I can support you in any aspect of your study planning or implementation. But now let's get back to the topic of this video. So I do have a separate video in which I go through the most common methodologies, including grounded theory and phenomenology. But just to briefly uh, summarize some differences and some similarities, because why is it always that these two methodologies get confused? And that's because they do have some similar aspects, sim similar features. So both of them, for example, really uh, prioritize attention to detail. They like to be very detailed. They like to really dig deep into the experience, the phenomenon that they are exploring. So they are they like to be very inductive in the analysis and uh, and uh, exploratory and like i said go into detail of the phenomenon now there are some pretty big differences as well such as the sample size so in in grounded theory it tends to be on average uh much higher than in phenomenology so it tends to be between let's say 15 25 sometimes even 40 or 50 participants in grounded theory and then in phenomenology it's pretty common to see very small samples so three four five six or or something like that so so that's a, a big difference however you can't really use uh, sample size as a good argument for why you're choosing one methodology or the other. So then you may be thinking uh, theory building. So of course, grounded theory, it's usually said that it aims to develop a theory. However, as I said and explained before in my videos, it's not uh, as obvious as it may seem because actually grounded theorists very often stress that uh, these days that a theory is not actually uh, something that you absolutely have to develop as a result of the study. The, the theory, the so-called theory, is actually just a very detailed explanation, very detailed understanding of a given phenomenon. So again, it's very easy to argue that phenomenology is also about a very uh, developing a very detailed understanding of a given phenomenon. So how do we decide and how do we actually know which one is which? And the answer is actually pretty simple and it's been there in front of us all the time. It's just a matter of understanding what all these people in academia and all these textbooks are talking about. So you probably heard more than once uh, some of the following statements. So for example, you've heard that uh, phenomenology uh, is about uh, lived experiences. Phenomenology is about lived experiences and grounded theory is about processes and, and understanding processes and, and things like that. But, but then again, what does it actually mean? What is a lived experience? Because again, we can have a grounded theory study that is about experiences that people live through. So it's about individual experiences, right? So I'll give you a question that's much more practical and it helps to understand the whole lived experiences thing. So what phenomenology is really about is understanding how it feels to live through something or how it feels to experience something. So that's what they are talking about when they talk about lived experiences. So, so how does it feel to go through trauma, for example? That's a lived experience. How do people feel? How do they experience trauma? Or how do they, do they experience grief or something? So that's the kind of question that phenomenology would ask. And then grounded theory, as I said, very often is about the process and structure. So for example, how does something develop or how does something happen? This is the kind of thing that we may want to understand if we're conducting a grounded theory study. And very often there are, again, similarities and overlaps between the two. So let me give you an example that's almost identical, but hopefully it will help you understand. So we may do a study of trauma, just like I, I told you in my previous example. However, if we're doing a phenomenological study, we may ask, what does it feel like to experience trauma? We really want to uncover these individual rich experiences uh, and very subjective experiences of trauma. But if we want to know, for example, how does trauma develop over time what are the stages of of trauma of traumatic experience or something like that or what it leads to or what what uh, what results in trauma all of that is more likely to be either grounded theory or some other study so as you may have uh, guessed uh, by now uh, your research questions and the aims of your study are also very tightly uh, connected 
to whether to which methodology you're choosing, which is nothing new because it's always been the case. However, you have to look at that as well. What are the questions? What is what is it that that you are planning to really explore in your study? And then you should know. And if you're not sure, again, just ask yourself a question. Is my study about trying to understand what it feels like to experience a certain emotion or a certain phenomena? Or is it more about something broader and the structure and the process? So I want to understand how, like I said, how identity develops, what factors may influence identity. Yes, it's going to be about an individual experience because it's going to be about identity, people's identity. But you're asking about something broader, not necessarily about these individual experiences and, and simply how does it feel or what does it feel like to experience X, Y, and Z. So this is it. I hope that this difficult topic became at least a little bit easier for you after this video. If it did, please like the video to help others find it. Post your questions if you still have any questions. Post your suggestions or comments if you have any, anything else to say or maybe some something that you usually do to, to distinguish between uh, these two pretty complex and confusing methodologies. And finally, remember to explore my newly developed Patreon community. Uh, specifically a blog which will always be free. I may add more features in the future, but the blog articles, the blog section will always be free. Join my community, interact with me or contribute to my blog. If not, you can still find plenty of useful articles in that blog section.